yes uh, good morning to my dear students and also welcome to electronics online classes here uh, in the previous class we are uh, discussing about the most important applications of your uh, operation of the and also in that you are all completed the two important uh, applications or uh, you have completed about the how your operation uh, is used as a inverting amplifier or how it is used as a non inverting amplifier now you have studied about uh, what is the voltage gain of your uh, inverting amplifier and what is the voltage gain of your non inverting amplifier and also as we know your uh, inverting amplifier it is also used as an inverter or it is also called as sign changer you have done that uh, proof for that also you are in the previous class studied about uh, in detail about the non inverting amplifier and uh, its construction and its voltage gain and also you have done about uh, your non inverting amplifier is also used as an uh, voltage follower or i said about it is also called as buffer amplifier and this much you studied in the previous class and uh, today we'll go for the lecture number 6 we are for the lecture number 6 and uh, today we are discussing about uh, another two important uh, applications of your uh, op amp that is as we know you have completed the inverting amplifier you have completed the non inverting amplifier today we'll discuss about uh, your op amp is used as adder or it is summing amplifier and also your op amp is uh, used as a subtractor or it is used as a difference amplifier we'll go in detail about uh, that and as i said already before going for the today's class in every class you are uh, recalling we recap what you studied in your last class because that is to put to understand the today's topic and as i said so many times every class are related and that's why that remember what i has said in the earlier classes and uh, the most important thing in that uh, last class we have studied about the applications of your operation amplifier as we know why you are giving more importance to the op amp because it is having more applications and also as i said in the beginning class it amplify ac as well as signals and it is used uh, why it is for op amp means it is the mathematical operation such as addition subtraction multiplication and uh, difference integration logarithm amplifier and logarithm amplifier this i said orally and it is having method mathematical proof for that if i said orally it is not correct i have to say from the mathematical i have to say prove it then it is uh, good it means uh, as we know already in your uh, op amp having two important uh, applications one is called linear applications and another called nonlinear applications and as we know your op amp is used for the to construct linear devices as well as non linear devices and uh, as we know the linear devices or linear circuits means the input and output are direct proportional in the linear circuits the input and output are direct proportional and as you know the non linear circuits are non linear devices the input or output is non direct proportional and as i said in the book the some examples of linear device it may be inverting amplifier non inverting amplifier or today we are discussing about op amp is used as adder op amp is used as a subtractor and some book they give this also uh your op amp is add it is used as a differentiator it is used as a integrator this you consider in the linear device but what about non linear your uh, op amp is used as logarithmic anti logarithmic and it is also used as a comparator it is used as a schematic and uh, remaining it uh, comes under non linear applications and uh, it means uh, today we we'll discuss about the linear applications and uh, we will first go for the op amp is used as adder then we go for the op amp is used as a subtractor and as i said study 
the important thing about uh, whenever you going for the different type of applications of your app am the most important thing you have to remember the their ideal characteristics by using that their ideal characteristics and also by the concept of virtual ground you ideal characteristics and that virtual ground concept you are using while analyzing the or while going proof for the your uh, operational plan it means the ideal characteristics also important and also i said about uh, the concept of virtual ground it is also important while uh, analyzing the different uh, applications of your uh, operational plan and yesterday i said already the most important thing in that uh, while going for applications one is the most important thing that is about uh, your input impedance as we know in your operational prepare ideally the input impedance is infinity but as i said practically it is having some mega ohms and as you are going you are going for the proof and you are going theoretically that's why consider the ideal ohms if you going for inverting amp prepare or inverting amp prepare you are going for add or subtract in every application you are considering the ideal ohm but when is it an ideal ohm and if you are considering the ideal ohm nothing but you are to consider the ideal characteristics the one important as i said already the input impedance the input impedance zi is infinity and why you are using this concept means as we know because of your input impedance infinity means your op amp is not especially in op amp the current is not going inside the op amp but because the reason is there are infinite impedance you are like input impedance infinity it means as you know impedance is nothing but the opposition offered by the input terminals because you have infinity opposition very more that's why your current is not moving inside the op amp because of the property of your op amp that is something but the input impedance is infinity and uh, also as we know the virtual ground concept virtual ground concept that also important while analyzing the your uh, different uh, applications of okay? by the virtual ground concept v a equal to v b or v b is zero means v a also zero v a also zero this is nothing but the concept of virtual ground this is also important while analyzing the different applications of your uh, okay. as you know the virtual ground is a number it is not mechanically grounded but considered as a ground and also the voltage is across that point the junction will be zero but still the current is going through that uh, junction at that point that is about the virtual ground concept and now we go for the the today's class that is about uh, your op amp is used as a add or the op amp op amp is used as a or is used as a add or uh, it is also called as summon we can uh, the opam can be used as a summing amplifier it also used as a adder another name of this is nothing but your mixer there is another name of adder is nothing but mixer and i said important thing what is the necessity of your adder or substructure as i said already basically our opam is an analog device it is an analog integrated circuit I said at the beginning, the upper region so important, versatile building block of analog electronics. It is so important building block of analog electronics, especially in the beginning in your analog computers. To go for the mechanical operation, addition, subtraction, difference, integration, they are using your upper. To go for the mechanical operation. addition subtraction difference is integration they are using the your operational plan that's it the use of your uh, adder or your summing amplifier in your uh, analog uh, computers 
and also nowadays uh, because uh, the most important property of OPAM, it can add the AC as well as DC signals. That especially it is used in your uh, broadcasting of different signals, especially in communication. If we understand the different signals in the same time, you can use your uh, summing amplifier in your uh, broadcasting different signals, especially whenever you are going for the audio signals, whenever mixing audio signals, or you are separating the audio signals, yes, or you are mixing the any video signals, in that time you are using about uh, this uh, op amp, or I said about uh, in your uh, DC level sector, you have also used for the DC level sector, you can add the DC level to the AC signal, or you can add DC voltage to the AC signal. That also applications of your uh, First thing of all, what is called op as an adder or what is called summing amplifier. As you know, the amplifier nothing but it amplifies the signals, but it not only amplifies the signal, it also adds the signals. What is called your adder or what is called summing amplifier? The amplifier in which the output voltage is sum of the or you can say the output voltage is, is equal to the sum of the input voltages in your adder or in your summing amplifier. What is summing amplifier? What is adder? Nothing but in the adder or in your summing amplifier, it is a type of amplifier. In this amplifier, the output voltage is, is equal to the sum of the input voltages. The output voltage is, is equal to the sum of the input voltages. That is, or you can say the output voltage is, is equal to the algebraic sum of the input voltages. That is the definition of your uh, summing amplifier or your uh, adder. Once again repeat, adder or summing amplifier nothing but the uh, output voltage is, is equal to the sum of the input voltages or the output voltage is, is equal to the algebraic sum of the input voltages. Especially in your um, summing amplifier we can consider the two types. One is called um, Inverting, inverting adder, inverting adder or summing up by another is called uh, non inverting, non inverting adder, non inverting adder. But uh, actually, you are having uh, both. The inverting adder also possible, non inverting adder also possible. What is the difference about inverting adder and non inverting adder? Actually, your syllabus is only for inverting adder, it is not going to syllabus for non inverting adder. And what is the major difference about inverting adder and non inverting adder? No doubt, here also you can add the signals, here also you can add the signals. But as we know here, the output voltage is equal to the negative sum of the input voltage. But here, the output voltage is equal to the uh, some of the input voltage. You are not having any sign change or you are not having any phase shift between the input output. Here you are having some sign change or you are having some phase difference between the input output. That is the difference about inverting adder and non inverting adder. Now we are going for the inverting adder. We are going for the inverting adder. And uh, we will go for the first it is so important to find a question. They will ask the exam construct the op amp is used as adder or you can say how your op amp is used as adder and you have to go for the proof for the voltage output voltage is equal to the sum of the input voltage that you have to go for the proof for that and before that once again you have to the data and as we know already you are considering the inverting amplifier because according to the your syllabus, you are having only the you are studying about the inverting adder. The op amp is used as an adder in the inverting mode, and it is something but your uh, B, B or can say B B. Because as you know, here said already, you are uh, considering the inverting adder. That's why we need non-inverting adder. Now, first step what you do? Or we are considering the op amp is used adder in the inverting mode. It means that's why we get the non-inverting terminal ground. Make it the non-inverting terminal ground. And as I said, 
we can consider two inputs or three inputs whatever you apply the input that input added and coming across the output the what i said for adder adder nothing but the output voltage is uh, some of the input voltage you can add two voltages or you can add two, three voltages whatever you apply the input voltage that will be added and uh, we can pull it from the output and here you can set up the three inputs and once again you are uh, using an uh, feedback resistor because as you know already why you are using feedback resistor because uh, as in your uh, op amp the current is not moving inside the op amp but it moves towards the through the feedback resistor current moves from the feedback resistor and also we want to we are using the negative feedback in your operation and because that reason that is something about for VA or the right VA something about the VA and here you can consider the different uh, inputs you can consider the different inputs you can apply the different inputs and uh, maybe you are considering three inputs Consider the three inputs. And um, can consider three or four inputs. This is nothing but uh, V1, this is nothing but V2, this is nothing but V3, and R1, R2, and R3. And here, as we know, this is the uh, I in, this is nothing but I in. And I B and this is your uh, I R and as we know, we are considering that this is not this is nothing but B A E and this is nothing but your B C C and you are considering inverting terminal or make it non-inverting terminal. First important thing, first you are going to draw the diagram and as we know already. Our problem is you use the adder. You are considering the inverting mode. You are considering the our inverting amplifier is used as adder. Our inverting amplifier is used as adder. It means uh, make it the non-inverting ground and you can add the different voltages for the inverting terminal. You are considering the V1, V2, V3, the different voltages and uh, how you are connecting through R1, R2, R3, the other price sensors. Through the input resistors, we are connecting the different voltages to the inverting terminal. And as you know, we are using the RF, the RF nothing but for feedback resistors. And this is the sim simple uh, construction of your op amp is used as a adder. And as you know, first you are to write the need diagram, then you are to write what is op amp, what is the definition, or what is called your adder. It is an amplifier or we can say it is a circuit. In that circuit what happens? The output voltage is equal to the sum of the input voltages. Then as usual use your first step how you have done in your inverting amplifier, non-inverting amplifier. Use your KCM for the node A. Use the here. can go for the KCM, the first step. The first step, we go for the first step, apply, apply KCL for the node A. Very simple, how you are done in the last class, first step you have applied the KCL for the node A. As we know, IA equal to IB plus IF, yesterday you have done already. I in equal to I B plus I F. I write about the I in. The input current is equal to the I B nothing but the current going into the open as well as I F nothing but the feedback current. I in nothing but input current. Input current and I B nothing but current moving inside the open. I F nothing but the feedback current. And as usual, as you know, IB zero. Why IB zero? Because uh, I said in the beginning, because of input dependency infinity. 
And so here, I B is zero because as we know, Jedi, the input impedance is infinite. And uh, here, then we can suppose here I M equal to consider I B zero. That becomes only I M. What can consider the I M? Now, how you have done in the last class? How we can write current in terms of voltage and resistance? As a cut comes up, current I is going to be by R. And uh, but here I is nothing but you are using the <coughs> it means you are uh, I one, I two, and I three. Because <coughs> you are considering the three inputs, you are considering the three voltages. That's why you get the three currents. Here I am three input voltages. We are three input voltages. The three currents. In place of I, we can write about I one plus I two plus I three equal to I one. And we know what what is I one, I two, I three. Yes, we know I one. In place of I, what we can write V one minus V A by R one. V one. Minus V A by R one, V two, I two nothing but V two minus V A by R one, and I three nothing but V three minus V A by R three. In place of I one, you write V one minus V A by R one. Can I write that? I can write I one equal to don't forget this. I one equal to V one minus V A by R one. V1 minus V A by R1. Then you go for <coughs> I2. I2 equal to same V2 minus V A by R1. Right? V2 minus V A by R1. And finally you go for I2. I3 are correct here. I3 equal to V3 minus V8 by R. And as usual, we know because of R also we can write I F. How we can write I F? I F equal to yes. We can write about I F equal to V8 minus V0 divided by R. V8 minus V0 divided by R. That is something for your I F. V A minus V A by R, and the, in the everywhere it consider uh, one, two, three, one consider the patient four. In every area, five or nine, two, three, and I F. What is the the V A is the the V A nothing but you are. Uh, Virtual ground because of virtual ground, what consider V A equal to zero. Consider V A equal to zero because of uh, virtual ground. Because of virtual ground. Virtual ground. Consider you consider V A equal to zero and substitute V A equal to zero for all the equation and equation two and equation three. That becomes what you get. Then it once again. I one plus I two plus I three equal to I M. That becomes what is going to I one? Because V A zero, V A zero, V A zero. V one by R one, V two by R two, and V three by R three. Can I? V one by R one. Plus V2 by R2 plus V3 by R. This is what we can write. Uh, I am V0 minus V1 by R. This three rows. Very simple. Only we have done the we have used the Ohm's law. We have used the Ohm's law. And uh, 
here the important thing is about <coughs> I is nothing but B by R because uh, considering I1, consider I1, consider I2, B2, R2, I3, B3, R3. And uh, now it is very simple, we can cross multiply. We want uh, output, we want output notation. This R and will multiply here. This want minus V0 equal to V1 by R1 plus V2 by R2 and plus V3 by R3 into RF into RF or you can simply take the minus and that side V0 equal to minus of you take this inside the RF that becomes RF by R1 into B1 plus RF by R2 into B2 plus RF by R3 into B3 which is about the only order simplification RF is not a clear and you take it inside the RF and as you know, the Rf by R1 of the input voltage gain for the V1 input, Rf by R2 of the input voltage gain for V2 and Rf by R3 of the input voltage gain for V2 because we are considering the inverting mode. As we know, voltage gain for inverting amplifier that is minus Rf by Rf. Now what you have to do, actually consider one condition actually take the condition R1 equal to R2 equal to R3 equal to RF sorry R1, R3, R3 and RF equal to consider R consider R1, R2, R3 equal to R we have to consider the on the resistance are equal to R then what happens the everything will cancel it becomes V0 equal to minus V1 plus V2 plus V3. This is your final. Uh, this is your final function. And this is simple. Consider the condition R1, R2, R3, and R F equal to R. Then both will cancel remaining V1, V2, V3. And as I said already. Why it is called op amp is used at right means as I said output voltage is equal to the sum of the input voltage. Why you are negative sign? Because you consider in the inverting amplifier. You are considering the inverting op amp. That's why you are having the negative sign here. It means the output voltage is equal to the negative sum of the input voltage. The output voltage is equal to the sum of the negative voltages, sum of the negative voltages. Why you get negative sign? Because of uh, using the inverting mode. This is the proof the of the, how you are to uh, find this in such a Very simple. As I said, we are applying the different input, inputs to the inverting terminal V1, V2, V3, through R1, R1, we are giving the inputs and because of we are using the different inputs, you get the different current I1, I1, and I1, I2, I3. This is nothing but incoming current and IB is nothing but the current going inside the pop-up and I have nothing but feedback uh, current and once again use your uh, first step use your KCL that becomes I is equal to IB plus IF and as we know IB is zero because of uh, input input is infinity and uh, remaining IA is equal to IF and replace I1 I in current I1 to I1 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 I2 I3 because we are using different uh, inputs and according to our uh, Ohm's law, the red I1 is V1 minus V A and this is V1 minus V A by R1 and V2, V2 minus V A by R2, R is the red if it is not visible right here also. If it is not visible, that's why I written there. V A by R2 from here. This also I written here. And here because of the virtual code, what you have done? V A is 0 because of the virtual one and uh, remaining about uh, in place of IF correct 
I have to be able to be not direct and be is here with the resultant. We may get uh, B1 by R1, B2 by R2, B3 by R3 equal to minus B0 by RF. And here we take our RF to plus multiply here. We will get B0 equal to minus B0 equal to B1 by R1, B2 by R2, B3 by R3 into R RF. And we will take the minus and that side, B0 equal to, also you take RF inside. RF by R1 into B1, RF by R1 to B2, RF by R3 into R3. Then you consider R1, R2, R3, 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 R3. Answer, the output output is equal to the minus sign of V1 plus V2 V1 plus V2 to V3. This is about the in simple way of your uh, explanation about the or proof for the how your R pack is used as the atom. And now we go for the second one that is something but your R uh, pack is used as a subtractor or also called as difference on the pack. This part has maybe a power. And now we look at another small, uh, actually we have a very small direction, I can say, very very small direction. And uh, now we look at the subtractor, or it is called uh, subtractor. Subtractor. Okay. Or we say about the difference on it. Difference on the This we know already as a or a adder, and I will go for a is a subtractor or difference amplifier. Basically, what is your uh, difference amplifier? What is your uh, subtractor? As we know, how you are done in the adder. Here also, the subtractor is a device. Cycle. In this, the output voltage is proportional to the difference of the input voltage. The output voltage is proportional to the difference of the input voltage. Or you can say uh, the output voltage is uh, direct proportional to the difference of the input voltage or difference of the or subsection of the input voltage. That is something but uh, it is also called as difference amplifier is also called as subtractor. Why it is the difference amplifier? I have said it already. Difference amplifier, difference amplifier, they are the same. As we know the property of op amp, it will amplify the difference between the input signals. Why it is the difference amplifier? Because all the output voltage is proportional to the difference of the input voltage. That is nothing but the subtractor, it is nothing but difference amplifier. Now we will consider. Sir, uh, where you are using this uh, subtractor is especially you are using in your uh, instrumentation amplifier. The subtractor is used in instrumentation amplifier. Also, as I said in the beginning, it is also used for your analog computers for the subtraction purpose or for the difference purpose. Now, once again, you draw the new diagram. And here, the important thing is that we are considering the both the inputs. We are considering the both the inputs. As in the inverting terminal, non-inverting terminal, or your adder, you are only considering the only one input. The remaining is grounded. But here you are considering the both the inputs. We are considering the both the inputs.
and uh, as we said we were uh, using upm as a substructor we use a different subject by means but apply the two inputs and where you have to apply two inputs we are use the uh, inverting terminal also we are use the non-inverting terminal one of the input is uh, applied to the inverting terminal another input is uh, applied to the non-inverting terminal and in the output what you want the output you want difference of these, these two inputs in the output you want different of these two inputs and you have to apply the V1 through R1 and you have to apply one voltage and another voltage from V2 uh, through the R2 and uh, as I said you are considering inverting as well as non-inverting both terminals are using you are applying the both the terminals you are applying the input to the inverting terminal also you are applying the input to the non-inverting terminal and we want that output you want different of these two signals and as usual as I said in the beginning while explaining about uh, different configurations of your uh, difference amplifier you are giving I, I said already about the working of uh, dual input and uh, balance of difference amplifier but here also in the time I said it is not possible to connect both the inputs and simultaneously and you and how to measure the both output simultaneously that's why considering only one input and uh, remaining make it ground and you see the output next time make it another one ground and make it another uh, input and uh, you get the output and uh, you are using the super position theorem here also because you are uh, applying both the inputs in inverting amplifier and inverting amplifier you are using only one input all another input is uh, grounded for example inverting amplifier you order non-inverting and ground for inverting adder also you order the non-inverting and grounded but non-inverting amplifier you order the inverting and grounded but for your subtractor you apply them both the inputs and for that what you order use that is the super quotient theorem by using the super quotient theorem you have to control the <coughs> total of the voltage by the super quotient theorem by the super quotient As we know, the output voltage is equal to the V01 plus V02. And uh, by the superposition theorem, we can uh, combine the both the voltages. And uh, as I said, first step, what you would consider? Consider only any one input and make it remaining ground and you go analyze that circuit. In the next time you take uh, another input grounded and you take uh, the analyze the circuit. First step, what you do? The first step, I will go for first step. First step, consider, consider, consider the your uh, V1 consider you are applying applying input to V1 and uh, V2 is grounded. First is consider only the V1, V2 is grounded. This portion is not there. This portion not there means you have done the non-metric and grounded. Only she considered the V1. We are applying only input to the V1. V2 is not there or let's say V2 is grounded. It means uh, if it is not there, then it acts as an inverting amplifier. If the V2 is not there, it means your output is acts as an inverting amplifier. It acts as an inverting amplifier. And as we know the voltage gain for the inverting open, we know the voltage gain for the inverting open. What is the voltage gain for inverting open? That is V01 equal to minus RF by RI into V1. This is the equation of the one. Very simple. Consider the first step, consider only applying input to the V1. 
B2 is grounded. It means uh, this uh, B2 is not there. It means the, your non-unity bundle grounded. In that time, what happens? The core of or open, it is used as a <coughs> inverting amplifier. And we know the voltage gap by inverting amplifier. V01 is equal to minus RI by RI into V1. This is nothing but the voltage gain for the inverting amplifier. In the second step, what you have to do? In the second step, in the second step, consider the consider the upline <coughs> upline in input to V2 and V1 is longer. Second step what you do? This is not there. This is problem. Now in the time the over of circuit action non-inverting amplifier. Your circuit action non-inverting amplifier. Now your work the right the open action non-inverting non-inverting amplifier. And as you know the outage gain for non-inverting amplifier. That is something but V02. This is V01. V0 takes nothing but yes, what is the voltage then for uh, non-inverting amplifier? 1 plus R F by R1 into V1. This is not. But here you have to apply the you consider the V2 here. Because you are applying the input to the V2 here and now our upam is used as a non-inverting amplifier. What is the voltage gain for the non-inverting amplifier? That is something called you can say about R M by R2. And here I can write about the V2 or I can write about V2. Because you consider it in the input here. Or especially you are using the extra resistor here. If this resistor is not there, consider it only the V2. This resistor is there, means actually use your uh, voltage or a How much the voltage of plus the R3 that you are consider. I write also in case of V2 can write. V02 equal to 1 plus R and by R2 into VB. And as you know the VB, VB is the first voltage across the R3. You can write VB equal to yes, R3 by R2 plus R3 into because we want the voltage across here. Use your uh, voltage divided theorem R3 divided by R2 plus R3 into V2. This may be some critical uh, equation there. From my equation number 2. And this is equation number 3. Now substitute the equation uh, 2 in 3. It becomes uh, V02 equal to 1 plus Rf by R2 equal to in case of V can write this R3 by R3 by R2 plus R3 into V2. You can simplify it and uh, now you have to consider the one total output rotation. The total output load is nothing but V01 plus V0. This is nothing but equation number 4. And you can add equation 1 and 4. Add equation 1 and 4, we get the total voltage. The total voltage is nothing but V01 plus V0. And as you know, the V01 is nothing but minus RF by R1 into V1 plus the right this much the right plus 1 plus Rf by R2 into Rf by R2 plus R3 into V2 R2 
focus on and uh, actually you are using some condition here how you have been added consider r1 equal to r2 equal to r3 equal to r equal to r then the here is not even take the senior r2 plus r2 plus r2 divided by r2 and the remaining you take the sim everything is cancel and you can by bring it at the Thank you.